Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. Over a year and a half ago I made a guide on how to install Bannerlord mods, however, Bannerlord wasn't fully released at the time, modding support wasn't what it is today, and there just wasn't that much variety of mods or ways to get them. So this video is the updated guide if you will. If you're new to modding, or specifically new to modding Bannerlord, look no further as I will show all the ways you can install Bannerlord mods, from automatically to manually, from the main platforms to get them from. I'll also go over a few technical issues you might experience, and I'll go over certain mods that you should get for optimal stability and performance. I put everything in time Stamps, so feel free to skip ahead to the part more relevant to you. Keep in mind, however, that I'm playing Bannerlord from Steam on Windows. If you're a console player, you can't mod the game. If you play on PC but bought the game on the Microsoft Store or got it from the Xbox Game Pass, I'll leave a recent guide by another YouTuber in the video description. There's a couple more steps, so you should check that one out instead. For everyone else, Let's go. So, you saw some cool mods for Bannerlord and you'd like to try them out, but how do mods work in Bannerlord? On the surface, it's pretty simple. When you launch the game, the launcher will pop up and there's a mod tab on it. Opening it, you can see the different modules that make up the base game. Whenever you install a mod, regardless of where it came from, if it's installed properly, it should appear right here with the other modules, with a few exceptions. When the mod is installed, make sure to check the box, then launch the game, and you're good to go. So, where can we get mods and how do we install them? Broadly, there are three main ways of getting mods. From the easiest to the most complex, the first option is automatically via the Steam Workshop, which requires no third-party tool or program. The second option is manually, either through Nexus Mods or ModDB, which requires a program called Renoir in order to work. The third option is automatically via Vortex, which is a program you'll have to install. So let's get through each method. The simplest and easiest way to install mods on Bannerlord right now is with the Steam Workshop. If you're not familiar with this, basically Steam hosts a modding platform within Steam for certain games, which is completely free. To access the Workshop, simply go into your Steam library, go to Bannerlord, and on the game page, click Workshop, and there you go. If you scroll down just a bit, you can browse mods by popularity, that is, the mods rating given by the community, the most subscribed to, and the most recent. Whenever you see a mod you like, click on it. The mod page is pretty similar to a regular store page from Steam, you have previews at the top, the date of the latest release on the right, and below, modders typically describe the mod and give additional info on how to install and remove the mod. To install a mod, simply click the subscribe button. Bannerlord will then update, and the time it takes depends on the size of the mod. Some of them are very small, some of them are very heavy, so it mostly depends on your internet speed. But when it's done, launch the game and you should see the mod installed in the mod tab of the launcher. If later you want to delete a mod from the workshop, go back to the mod page and click on subscribe, at which point Steam will delete the mod from your game. Overall, if you're trying to keep modding as simple as possible, stick to the Steam Workshop. Not only does it install the mods for you, but as long as you have an internet connection, the Steam Workshop will also update the mods for you automatically whenever a new version comes out. And in terms of installing mods automatically, it's pretty much the only option that does not require any third-party tool or program. All you need is Bannerlord on your Steam account. Now let's move on to installing mods manually. You might wonder, if the Steam Workshop is so easy, why bother? Well, the main reason is that the Steam Workshop is not actually the most popular spot to see mods. The best places are actually Nexus Mods and ModDB, and these require you to install mods manually. But broadly speaking, installing mods manually is pretty reliable in that most mods install the same, regardless of where you get them from. So if you're looking for a mod that isn't on the Workshop, knowing how to install manually can be pretty useful, and it's still pretty easy. The only tool you will need is a program called WinRAR. Generally, mods are not a single file, but a folder containing several items, so modders typically package their mod into a single compressed file for convenience, and part of installing them means having to decompress the file. That's what WinRAR is for, and it is safe, it is reliable, and I've used it for years, so I left a link for it in the video description. Once you've installed it, let's start with Nexus Mods. Nexus Mods is free to use, however, you do need to create an account, so if you don't have one, click on Register and follow the process. After that, use my link to get to the main Bannerlord page. Here, scroll down a bit until you get to this area. Here, Nexus Mods divides Bannerlord mods into a bunch of categories, so feel free to explore. Whenever you see a mod you like, click on it to access the mod page. For this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to install manually from Nexus using CC's Banners. This is a simple but reliable mod that adds more banners to the game. I left the link below so you can follow along and do it yourself. On the mod page, similar to the Steam Workshop, you have previews at the top, description at the bottom. To download the mod, head over to the Files tab. Under Main Files, you can see the mod, when it was updated, its size, etc. Old files can sometimes be found below, but you can ignore those. You have two options to download. Mod Manager is when using Vortex, which I'll get to in a moment, and Manual. Since we're doing it manually, let's click on Manual Download. This takes us to another page where you can click on Slow Download. Fast Download is only available if you have a premium membership. So after clicking Slow Download, it will start after a few seconds. 
Now, when you go to the downloads on your PC, if you installed WinRAR, opening the file will automatically open it with WinRAR. When previewing the files, you may get a pop-up from WinRAR asking you to get the paid version, but you can literally just close it and keep using WinRAR anyway, no worries. Now, to install those mods manually, you need to take the contents previewed in WinRAR and drop them in the modules folder of the game. To find where Bannerlord is installed on your computer, head back to Steam, find the game in your library, and then right-click, Properties, in the properties, go to Installed Files, then hit Browse. This will open the folder on your PC that contains Bannerlord. Here, mods can be stored in the Modules folder, so open it. And now, from the preview window in WinRAR, take the main folder and drag drop it into the Modules folder. And that's about it. When you launch the game, you should see CC's banners in the mod tab of the launcher. Start the game, go into the clan menu, and browse the flags. If you see more variety, you've installed the mod successfully. That's manual install from Nexus Mods. From ModDB, the process is pretty much the same. Follow the link in the description. However, ModDB mostly hosts total conversions at the moment, which is its own beast that I will talk about later in the video. So when you're on any given mod page, you have a summary of the mod at the top, previews right below. To download the mod, head over to the Files tab, click the latest version, then click Download Now, at which point the download will start after a few seconds. If the Files tab is grayed out and not accessible, that's because the mod hasn't been released yet. ModDB allows modders to create the mod page to advertise the mod before releasing it. But if you want to try downloading a mod from ModDB, I left a link to a Game of Thrones mod. This is a big mod obviously, so the download may take some time, but past that point, the process to install manually is exactly the same. Get into your downloads, open the mod with WinRAR, and extract it to the modules folder, and that's about it. In terms of installing manually, that's pretty much it. Keep in mind though, you should always carefully read the instructions on a mod page, as sometimes there may be more to it. Either way, if you want to remove a mod you installed manually, go back to the modules folder on your computer, find the mod folder, and delete it. Simple as that. And that leaves us with Vortex. Vortex is a program offered for free by Nexus Mods, which is kind of like the Steam Workshop, but specifically for Nexus. The main difference being that with Vortex installed on your PC, you can click the Mod Manager download option instead of Manual, and Vortex will automatically install the mod for you. So it's not manual, but unlike the Steam Workshop, it does require a bit of setting up, so let's get on with it. First off, you need a Nexus account. If you already have one to install manually, then you're good. I left a link for Vortex in the description, so follow along. Now, the interface is a bit intense, so I'll stick to using it for Bannerlord exclusively, but you can also watch some videos right here on the dashboard to help familiarize yourself with Vortex. But for us, we'll just head to the Games tab. These are the games that Vortex can manage mods for. So in the search bar, type Bannerlord until it appears, then click Manage. This will switch Vortex to the Bannerlord profile, at which point it locates the game on your PC and links it. So to test it out, I'm installing CC's banners again. First, I need to delete the manual version though, so as I said earlier, go to the Modules folder where you install the mod manually, select the folder, and hit Delete. Now let's install it again, but with Vortex. On the Nexus mod page, click Mod Manager Download. When you do, the download process will appear automatically in Vortex, and then you'll be prompted to install the mod. Vortex does it all itself, at which point you can launch the game, see the mod in the Mod tab, and enjoy it. Now this might be easier than installing manually, but keep in mind, not all Bannerlord mods on Nexus currently allows installing with Vortex, and some modders specify that installing manually can be preferable for some mods. For example, we just did it with CC's banners as an example, but they literally say on the mod page to do it manually instead, as Vortex is not all that reliable. So always check the mod description, just to be safe. If you want to remove a mod from Vortex, head to the mod tab, and on the far right of the mod itself, you can see the option to remove it. If you choose to uninstall a mod, it will still be on the computer, it will just not be activated. So to completely delete it, you also need to check Remove from Archive. And that's about it, those were the three main ways of getting mods for Bannerlord. You should know, however, that there are different types of mods with different purposes, and they all behave differently, which can lead to different issues. So, in this next part of the video, let's talk about some of the issues you might have while trying to mod Bannerlord. There are several reasons mods may not work properly, but a primary culprit is requirements. A lot of mods depend on other mods to work properly, and those mods need to be installed as well. Nexus Mods is the only platform that will tell you explicitly which mods you need to get in order for another mod to work, with a link to other mods you need. If you already installed those mods, you can ignore it, but otherwise, those are mods you should install as well. And that's where we get into the types of mods themselves. Generally, there are three types of mods for Bannerlord. Utility, Submod, and Total Conversion. Utility mods are mods meant to expand Bannerlord's modding capability 
abilities. These mods don't change any aspects of the game, but they help stabilize mods that do, and I strongly recommend that you get all the main ones, such as Harmony, Butterlib, UI Extender X, and the mod configuration menu. These are available both on Nexus and the Workshop, and with these four mods installed, virtually every other mod has a much better chance of running smoothly. Another utility mod that is not necessary, but definitely worth considering, is the Bannerlord Software Extender. This is an alternative launcher for Bannerlord with better modding capabilities. Again, it's not necessary, but it does provide for a more stable experience. So here's how to install it. Now you can get the extender on Nexus, but although there is an option to install with Vortex, I don't recommend it. A lot of people have complained that it doesn't work well, and there's still some manual setup to do. So you might as well do it manually, as it's far more reliable link in the description. So to get it, download it the exact same way you would any other mod, except once you get to the download folder using WinRAR, you have to drop the bin folder not in the modules folder, but the folder above, the main game folder. After that, you need to find the bannerlord.blsc.launcher.x by going to bin, then win64 shipping client, and there it is. Create a shortcut of the launcher and place that shortcut on your desktop. From there, you can launch the game using the shortcut to play the game with the software extender. Mind you, Harmony needs to be installed for it to work. To make sure it works upon launching the game, open the command console with Alt and Tiled keys. Tiled is this key on your keyboard. If it doesn't work, you need to change your keyboard language to English, which you can do with the shortcut Windows plus Spacebar. In the command console, type blsc.version, hit enter, and if the console shows you the version number, it means it works. So those are the utility mods, and having them largely solves the main requirements issues. Some mods make up the bulk of Bannerlord mods. These are small mods that only change some aspects of the game. CC's banners is a prime example. Regardless of where and how you install them, they all work the same by being checked in the mod tab of the launcher, and theoretically, you can have many of them simultaneously to enjoy the game. However, another big issue can arise here, and that's the load order. Generally, the game loads in a specific order, and that means mods also have to be loaded in a specific order in order to run properly. This is something you can do directly in the game launcher by dragging mods up and down. As for which order is preferable, you can look at the description tab of the mod in question, where the modder usually tells you. As a general rule though, the main structure is the following. The utility mods load first, Harmony always on top, followed by the Bannerlord modules, followed by everything else. As long as you stick to that order, it should be fine. And finally, Total Conversions are massive mods meant to take the entire game and put it in a different world, be it another time period or a fantasy world. Currently, there's very few options available, but they're roughly installed the same as other mods. The main issue that you could have with Total Conversion is the game seemingly freezing on launch. This will most likely happen with mods like Eagle Rising, The Old Realms, and Realms of Thrones. This is normal, and the game is not in fact frozen. What's happening is that the mods have so many new assets that the first time you launch the game with the mod, the game needs to build all the necessary shaders to run the mod, and this can take a lot of time. As a rule of thumb, give the computer at least two hours to load. When you're past that first loading, you can launch the game again and it will run normally. The Old Realm specifically also has a build shader cache option in the menu which allows you to pre-build all of the items in one big loading time, so that the game runs smoothly afterwards. As of now, this is a common issue with total conversions, the first launch always takes a long time, and new scenes in the game can also load for quite a bit the first time around, it's annoying, but it's not a bug, you'll get used to it. Another issue, though it's less common now, is the clash of game version and mod version. Bannerlord, although fairly stable, updates often, and this can cause mods to start malfunctioning, especially if they have not themselves been updated in a while. Again, this is getting less and less common by the day, but generally modders will specify what game version their mods has been tested on, and this can give you a good idea of whether the mod will play or not. To see your current game version, you can see it at the bottom corner of the launcher. If you have a mod that only works with a specific game version, you can also change the game version yourself by going back to the properties on Steam, then to the betas tab. If set on none, the game will stick to the latest version available, but clicking on it, there's a drop down menu where you can select a specific version. Keep in mind, this will force the game to partly reinstall, which can take some time. However, I don't recommend it because of all the popular mods at the moment, very few of them are not playable on the current version. For example, I tried a couple of total conversions a few weeks ago, and the total conversion 1259 Anno Domini was the only mod that did not work on the latest version. The last main challenge you could face is trying to match some mods with total conversions. For example, I had the cheat mod paired with pretty much every total conversion I played, and the only one that caused a crash was the old realms. 
Should you have crashes based on a mod clash, the only thing you can really do is disable mods gradually until the game stops crashing, at which point you can find which mod is causing the crash and you can keep playing without enabling that one. Keep in mind, generally, the more mods you have, the more likely you are to experience issues, but that's just something you gotta play around with. I know this all sounds really complicated, but again, I'm just going through the list of side effects here. In actuality, the game runs fairly well now, and once you've picked your preferred method of installing mods, it's actually pretty easy and straightforward. So I guess the last question is, which method is best? For that, it really depends on your preference. I think the Steam Workshop is the easiest, but the selection is a bit limited. Nexus has more options, and you can install either manually or with Vortex, Though generally, Vortex is not all that reliable, so make sure to read the description, as again, modders will specify if downloading manually is preferable. ModDB only offers to download manually, but it doesn't require an account, it does not cap download speed limits. However, the selection is also few, and mostly focuses on total conversions. The good thing though is that nothing stops you from using all three platforms at the same time. In that sense, I would say the Steam Workshop is best for the utility mods, since the Workshop will reliably keep them up to date. For some mods, Nexus is the place to go, and downloading manually is reliable but it also means updates need to be installed manually as well, so Vortex can be more useful there. For huge total conversions, you're better off getting them on ModDB, if only because it will download faster, unless it bugs out, which does happen occasionally. But that's pretty much it for today, so thanks for watching, I hope this helped you out, and if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to respond. If you want to support the channel, it's actually super easy, much easier than modding Bannerlord, you can just hit the subscribe button. <laughs> thanks again, and I'll see you next time.